We have a very interesting class today, topic. So here on a slide behind me, uh, I put here the official, uh, the official name of the class for the record there. On top, you see the name of the entire series. It, it says Noah Seven Commandment and the Book of Genesis. And we made a, so, we made a survey on the classes at the beginning and we said we are gonna go throughout the book of Genesis. And as it presents us the commandment one by one, it's a divine book and it's, it, it turned out to, uh, to be designed, so to speak, uh, for, for, for the seventh commandment because it goes from one commandment to the other. We describe it in a first class survey. And of course, the first, the first class will be on idolatry. So uh, uh, you see there on the slide, Noah's first commandment and idolatry and, and, and chapter one. So the, the, amazingly, uh, the book of Genesis begins uh, with the description of God and creation and Adam and actually, the only thing it presents there, as far as it uh, relates to the commandment, is, is idolatry. And we said at the moment, uh, when, when uh, just to remind you, when God says, uh, let us make Adam in plural, we open up uh, the door for, idolat for idolaters to err. Uh, well, we, we, we'll, we'll go back to that later on. We'll see what kind of idols uh, involved, but uh, in principle, it's not, it's not enough just to know the idols. Uh, we need to know God. Because uh, I it's not enough just to be neutral. I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna I, uh, worship idols, but I'm not, I'm not gonna worship anyone. It's not gonna work. You, if, you, if you don't worship God, if you don't recognize God, mm -hmm. you will surely, surely fall a prey uh, to, to the idols. When I say idols, I'm not saying about foolish wooded stone statue or something or trees or, or but we'll talk about what, what, what is covered by, by, idol, by idols. We are built, we said, uh, to face idolatry because in the same world that uh, God created us, said, let us make Adam in our form, in our image. That's, that's, that's when he made us. At the same time, he opened the door for idolatry. For idolatry. So he made, he made us to face a trial of idolatry. <clears throat> so idolatry is not just another commandment like theft, do not steal, do not uh, murder. <clears throat> no, that, uh, idolatry stand out as a very issue that the very trial that we are born into. So obviously it's more than just the uh, worshiping foolish, foolish stuff. It's much more, it's a, it's a battle between uh, being attracted to God or being attracted to the idols. <laughs> And so why, why did God <coughs> made us like this? Does he have anything, any, anything else to do? Uh, um, why, why did he put us in trial like that? Well, we said already uh, that uh, Adam, that's a class one you see on the slide. <coughs> we may talk about it. <coughs> the, uh, it. Adam was made, or the, if, uh, the God, the, or the name of God, that the, the name of the creator who, who created the heaven and earth is not, is Elohim in Hebrew, which means a judge, almighty judge. So the, the, the message of Je Genesis 1 is when, when a nameless creator who is above our conception, you know, we cannot identify, we cannot even conceive uh, in our mental, in our human uh, mentality or mind, we cannot perceive the real issue, the real essence of God. But we can perceive 
uh, is function. So the Torah is telling, telling us that at the, day, at the time that he created the universe and he created us, he, he sat on the throne of judgment. He acted like a judge on other occasions. Uh, for instance, just before making Adam, he moved to another chair. Uh, which is a, a chair of mercy and compassion, which is a different from Elohim. But at the time of creation, when he created nature, the six days, he, the heaven and earth, he sat on a throne as a judge. Now we need to find, we need to identify what, what kind of uh, judgment he, what, what kind of judgment he makes, what sort of a, uh, uh, judge he is, uh, because we are, we all of us are under, still under that scrutiny. He made us to stand a judgment, the judgment. That's, that's the basic of Rosh Hashanah holiday. <coughs> Rosh Hashanah, you know, is a, is a uh, uh, anniversary of creation of the story. No wonder that uh, we, 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 we say in a synagogue, uh, the whole the whole prayer is devoted to the idea uh, that uh, today God, God ascend again on the throne of judgment and He judge us. So we all stand in judgment, even the mosquito, even the black hole, the whole universe stand in judgment. Why? Because He if He said He created it for judgment because He's a judge. So so again. Where are we now? We are now, uh, we need to, to understand idolatry, to comply with our idolatry commandment. We need to know who are the idols. We will devote time for that later on. As we, as we, as we move to, to the creation of Adam, we'll see how Adam is created with the, with the idols on, on God's minds. We are built to face those idols. So we'll have opportunity to talk about the idols and you will cover all the idols in the universe. Amazingly, all from that chapter. <clears throat> and now, but it's not enough, he said, we need to also, not enough not to, not to, ab to abandon the idols. It's not less important to know whom should we worship. So here we are. We already know now that Elohim, we, uh, God, we need to recognize Elohim and we understand that we, we are born to stand in trial. So what are the features of Elohim? Uh, in, in the book here that uh, we, we, uh, I wrote uh, last time, it says uh, Genesis first, first chapter and no, first law. I, I, I go in more elaborate way. I, I discuss it in more detail. But here, the, the main thing about Elohim, the, the attribute of judgment that we need to know, we must know, we must remember it for the rest of our life. That Elohim, who, who still judges us today, even today, <laughs> Elohim is the absolute judge, the judge that goes with the absolute justice. He, he, he doesn't recognize mercy. Mercy belongs to another attribute. And when Elohim created nature, he sat on the throne of a judge, of a judgment that knows no mercy. Look around us, the, the, the tsunami, the volcano, the earthquake, don't know any mercy. So Elohim created it without any mercy. This is a feature of Elohim. But with absolute justice, because you are eat, you eat. When you eat, you kill another animal, and in time, in time, you 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 pay the you you are, you you are, you are eaten by somebody else. So it's a measure for measure. He pay is it because of a just is a just God is a just a, a judge. He pays ret uh, retribution in exact fashion. Pharaoh threw the children to the Nile, the, the, the children of Israel to the Nile. Well, 
No wonder he himself was drawn by in, in the water. Who saw that? Ito, the first Noahide. Ito, the, the father-in-law of Moses, that was struck him when he came to Moses. When he, the, the Torah says he heard. What did, the Rashi says, what, what did he hear? That, uh, that Pharaoh was drawn by water. Oh, he said, that's it. He, 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 he got his, he paid his due. Measure for measure. And uh, Elohim put people from trial, like Abraham, Abraham with the bounding of Isaac, who tell Abraham to, to, bound the, to, to, to bind his uh, son on the altar? He said, okay, but no, no mercy. And before a trial, yeah, Abraham passed so many trials by Elohim. Otherwise, you, you, if you don't appreciate that, if you don't know that, you can ask, why did the good God put Abraham in trial? The question falls apart if you pay attention to the text that says, oh, Elohim put him on trial. Who saved him from the trial is another attribute. There was a clash there between two attributes. We talk about it. So again, Elohim is is a, a, a judge uh, who, who act for measure for measure attribution, is wise. He built he build the universe with with a head, with, with the wisdom. How do I know it? Because it says it, the Torah says at the head of the event. It doesn't say at the beginning. In English, it says at the beginning, uh, God created heaven and earth. In Hebrew, it's at the head of the event, Elohim created heaven and earth. So the Kabbalah and Rabbi said, the head of the event, he, 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 he built the universe with the head, with wisdom. The wisdom of Elohim, it's all over. All of them, from the DNA, from the multitude of creature. What kind of wisdom? Interesting. There, there is different type of wisdom. Scientific wisdom, and there is a general conception, which is called Chochmah. But uh, there is a more particular wisdom. It's called Bina. Bina is, is, is going to detail, to elaborate, to derive things from one from the other in minute detail, like you see in nature. So billion of species going from one, growing up from another, one to another. That's the wisdom of Elohim. It's amazing how everything fit here, fits here. Uh, Kabbalah says Elohim is Bina, which is uh, not Chochmah. Chochmah is more general term of, of wisdom. Bina, is going to detail. And that, that is a practical making it on the ground. So Chochmah being a that is Chabad, the famous Chabad movement come from here. They, they, they try to, to learn Torah in the three, three dimension of Chochmah being a that. And Elohim is the Bina. Uh, going to detail. You see, it's also that this wisdom is not only in nature, with so many zillion of species and varieties, but also in judgment, in the law. Do you know the law, especially the Talmud, let's say, endless discussion of there is a law. Now that there's so many different aspects of the law, we're going to detail. And from detail, they split to more detail. And there is a commentary, and as a generation passed by, we learn more and more the, the, the endless the, the variety of, of in, in, uh, small things that, uh, I mean, small detail, minute detail that come out from the law. And that's the wisdom of Elohim in the law. He's a judge and a, and a builder of nature. So you see his wisdom in nature. And in, in the justice, in the justice system, in law, he gave us the, the mind to decipher all tiny, tiny things. That's why the law is endless, it's spreading out. It's because of, come from him, to detail.
Okay, uh, uh, there's much more. I want to kind of emphasize the main thing about Elohim, of course, is merciless, but at the same time, is also the provider. He's the one who gave the, who, who give aid to any creature who is, what, whatever is necessary to fly. He gave the, the bird the wing to fly, and he gave the crocodile the tooth to bite, and he gave us the mind. So he's a provider, and he, he makes sure that uh, uh, every creature lives in his ha- inhabitant, and thrives in his habitat. So he's a kind, he's not, he, doesn't, he doesn't work with compassion or mercy or forgiveness. That's another attribute. But, but he's a provider, wise and provider, he's kind. But they don't ask for him mercy. If you sin, uh, you stand before God, before, not before God, before Elohim, Elohim, you don't ask for mercy from him. He's not going to listen to you. There's another attribute. And uh, we talk about it. But uh, Elohim, every time you see the word Elohim in the Torah, refer to that kind of attribute. attribute. The first, the first, this is a signature of truthfulness. Uh, his name, nickname is truth because it's a just attribute. And he seeks the truth, the, the justice. He's also seeking the truth. The this, this rabbi said the signature is truth. For instance, uh, since his, his name appeared 32 times, 32 times in chapter one, in six days, unbelievable time. Um, there, are no, no, there are no chapter in the Bible that contains so many times the name of Elohim. 32 times in just few verses. He said that, Elohim said that, let it be this, and then he judged. And so, uh, 32 times is every so, and every time a name appears here is a signature of truthfulness. So the story of Genesis must be true. Because if you discredit this, the six day story, you discredit Elohim. And if you discredit Elohim, you discredit the whole Bible. So the story of Genesis must be true. We are going to see if, if this is true, if you can, if you can vouch for that. So, and uh, so we said he's wise, he's just, he's, he's, he's exact, he's a, he pay back in exact fashion. He build, he build the nature in exact fashion. Uh, you can put, you can, that's why we, we can, we can, we can discover the, the law the law of nature, even mathematics, are so they're so precise. Uh, you cannot change uh, the, the the weight of the atom even a little bit, and you get a different in, 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 get a different in, uh, universe. The universe is elegant and precise, and work by precise laws, because Elohim built it. This is a feature of Elohim. To build with precise. So, in a, in 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 after saying after saying that at the beginning or the head of the event, Elohim created heaven and earth. That's the headline of chapter one. Then Moses continues telling you uh, what happened. In, what happened in the sixth day? That Elohim now is described as a builder of six story building uh, and uh, the nature of six story building by six days. And at the end of each day, at the end of each day, the, uh, the builder comes and check to see if, uh, if uh, the day is good or not. What does it mean good? Good here is, is no moral connotation. Good here is in the eyes of the builder, uh, it, which means if there is a plan, and Elohim, the builder had a plan, and he wants to see if the if if the if the floor that he built or that level of that day, with capital D, day of creation, 
if it really fits the plan. So if he had a plan, it means he was, he was building the universe with a goal. What kind of goal? Let's see. Maybe, maybe put, put, the goal was perhaps to put us on earth. It took him so long to put us. And for him, it's, for us, it looks long. For him, it's, it's nothing. 13.5 billion years is nothing for him. But he, he, he built it six days. At the end of six, at the end of the each day, he came and checked to see if it's good. At the end of the first day, he said, and Lokim saw that it was good. It was morning and evening. Day one was over. But here's the point. Whenever I make a judgment on the day, and he said it was good, it also means that something was good means can survive, can, can go on. You can go on to the next day. And if not, uh, that, that, that day would have been, would be destroyed, eliminated. Or it could be that the day or some creature were good for, for a certain period, certain phase of the building. Later on, they were not needed, so they were discarded like a, like a scaffold that is not useful anymore. So remember, every time he make a judgment, and he said it was good, usually at the end of the day, then there is an option of being not good. And the dinosaurs were eliminated because at one time, at one time they were good, but the next day they could support another day on top. Uh, so they could support us, for instance. We couldn't live by the dinosaurs. So there was a decision to eliminate them without mercy. He, 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 give life, he gives life and he has a right to take the life away. He walks by efficiency. He, he, moving towards the goal. It's a very important concept to understand that uh, there are two options. Uh, if you don't, if you don't, I mean, a, a day is good if you can support another day on top. Man was born on the sixth day, the last the moment of the sixth day. And we are also need a good or not. We are also just to be if we are good or not. If we are good, we will see the next day, which is a Sabbath, which is a eternal Sabbath. Each day is an era. It can be billion of years. So uh, uh, the next day of creation is the seventh. To get there, we need to be good, at least. If you are not good, we will be eliminated. We will not race like the dinosaurs. So we face the same, the same fate, the same judgment. Okay, by Elohim. Well, don't tremble. He also he, he also used us and build us. He also the Creator also used another attribute of mercy, uh, compassion, that uh, we have the option of. Uh, I, li I like the dinosaurs. We have the option to repent to ask forgiveness to start all over again. Because we are born by, with the help of another attribute. But the dinosaurs were built only by Elohim. Therefore, they have no chance. They were not needed anymore. So they were eliminated. So we need to, I'm saying that because we need to get the feeling how, how the nature works and how Elohim built it, his future, and how he judge, he's a builder and a judge, and he's merciless, but very efficient, and also kind because he provides life. But uh, every creature stands the judgment one time in its, in its life to see, not on, on a day to day basis, but also in, 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 in a history, historical term, to see if the, if the species is needed anymore or can be eliminated. 
and Elokim wouldn't do less than to eliminate a day uh, if it's not needed. As we said that Rashi, the commentary of the Torah of Rashi, Elokim created words of days and he eliminated them. Okay, so as we now, as we spoke about, uh, we tell me, let's say now what is good in Elokim eyes, it is a judge. But when you judge the nature, uh, there is no, you cannot judge the, the dinosaur if they are morally good or not. They are not judged by, by moral, in moral terms, because they don't have a mind for that. They are simply judged if they are needed for the next step of evolution or not. But uh, mankind, since we have a mind and we get, we're given Torah, we're given his law, and we understand morality, our judgment also involves moral issues. Unlike the mosquito and unlike the, we all judge. But uh, the judgment is, 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 is a toil today, is, is a, is a uh, build according to the creature ability. And our judgment is different. For instance, for instance we are born to stand idolatry trial. If you fail the idolatry trial, uh, we don't see the second next day. Rosh Hashanah, the only prayer in Rosh Hashanah, only prayer that you saw, you'll find the prayer book in Rosh Hashanah is the end of idolatry. You see? Uh, uh, I, we are standing on, on, on good ground when we're saying that. Rosh Hashanah is a universal judgment, including mankind, and we pray for what? For the end of idolatry. We don't pray for the end of theft, theft or bloodshed, or the end of uh, adultery. We pray for the end of idolatry because mankind is built, chapter one, to face that trial. And Rosh Hashanah is based on chapter one. Everything in chapter one. From the beginning to the end. We are, we are, we are only the beginning now of the chapter. All right. So <clears throat> let's see. We have uh, like half an hour. And uh, the question is, as we move on. Uh, okay, I just said that Elohim is truthful, signature is, 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 a, is, a, uh, is a, a, proof, a proof of uh, truthfulness. If you see his name in a text somewhere saying something, it must be true. So since his name appears 32 times in chapter in his story of Genesis, wow, it must be true. If you have people on the street with Genesis, the story of Genesis, you say, oh, no, that's the ancient myth. Cannot be. You cannot, I mean, the Torah says it's one week, only 5,000 years ago. We know the universe from science, we know better. Most people, 90%, 99% perhaps around the globe, tend to discard the whole Bible away because of this problem with Genesis, because they perceive it as a negating science. Most students in the United States colleges, there was a survey recently, and they admitted that the thing that pushed them away from the Bible is a, is a story of Genesis, they couldn't copy it. Oh, the rabbi said it is allegorically, there is a holy beast, don't take the story literally. Uh, no, people take it literally and they compare it to science. And lo and behold, science, science says completely different story. Okay, so I have here uh, uh, what the science says. I, th I think it's a reverse because of the, uh, the camera here. Um, I don't want to, to spoil the picture. So you see the reverse uh, 
mirror, mirror image, but this is a video made by History Channel. And it says, uh, it was published a few years ago, how the earth was made. I recommend that everyone, every one of us should have, read it, have it, the history, how the earth was made. Video by History Channel. It's just pleasure to watch, pleasure. It summarizes you, I remember it was aired on the TV that when I saw it. And it summarized in artistic form, everything you know from science about the history of the universe from 30, from the 30.5 years ago until today. Based on everything you know from science, archeology, span geology, uh, uh, biology, astronomy, everything is there, physics, everything is there. They did a wonderful job. Not only that, and the video starts by bragging, the narrator there said, says, okay, from now, hey, he said, you know, for thousands of years, uh, people believe that the universe is only 5,000 years, built in one week. Let me tell you what, what, what really went on. And he goes on and I tell the story. It's a few hour stories here. Uh, and it goes in detail, it just, you cannot, you are hooked to it when you watch it. It described day by day, there's no days. It described the history of the universe, of our planet, the, the, the whole evolution from, from date, from, from face to face, and bragging about not uh, being different from the Bible, but in much detail, and it's beautiful to watch. Only that, when I watch it, I fell on the floor. The guy was actually, it, without being paying attention, what he was saying is really repetition of Moses is saying. I couldn't believe it. So I watch it again and again and again and again, again until I know it by heart now. And I could actually, whatever he says, I could find it. Moses said it. I'll give you an example. I mean, I'm not going to go in, into detail in the book here that we published uh, at the end of last class, Genesis, first chapter, and Noah, first law. You find it in Amazon. So here in the book, uh, I, I, I gave a more elaborate, a detailed uh, uh, comparison between between uh, uh, the, this video and the uh, Genesis. I went to detail here. Now we are going to do it in, in a very short, concise, mainly to see what Moses is saying and what History Channel is saying, to see if they match. And you tell. I leave it to you to tell. You have the same mind as mine, if not better. So, so here's what, what but uh, I'm, I'm reading now from Jenny, okay? We read, we read in, in very short, quickly. We read what Moses is saying day by day, uh, or six day, and we compare it with what, uh, what this uh, history channel is saying. History channel don't want to call it a day, you call it a phase. And even, even give it a name, even give it six names. By the way, before I start, uh, how long is creation, day of creation? It's, it's, the rabbi came to conclusion long, long ago, about a thousand years ago, if not more than that, that the day of creation is nothing to do with our day. The day with the capital D, and we made, they calculated it. There is a Kabbalistic tradition uh, uh, on the average of 2.1 billion years is, is a, a day, times six, we come to close to 13, 13, uh, 13 billion years, which is exactly what science says about the age of the, of the universe, 
very close. Uh, in the book there, and again, in, in, in the book that I just uh, showed you, um, that we published on Amazon, I go there, I tell, I, I, I show the, the, how they calculated it. Here, I'm not going to spend time on that. And I, it's enough to, to, to know that uh, the rabbis long ago uh, understood that day is not our day. And 5,000 years is only from Cain and Adam, from the soul of Cain and Adam. But the first few chapters, uh, the, the story of Genesis and the story of Eden, not included in the 5,000. It could be, it could take a long time in six days. It could have taken a long time, long time. To 13 billion years, billion years, billion years. You know, uh, uh, think about it. Uh, we, we know how the earth looks now. You see it on TV, you see it on the camera, from the satellite, small, beautiful, beautiful round ball with a blue envelope and studied with light. Uh, human colonies, an airplane flying, beautiful, beautiful. The earth didn't look like this. Billion of years. The earth looked completely different. And who tell me, me who tell me that? Moses. I don't know how, how could he know that? So let's see. 13th history of, of earth billion years. And we need to we need to go to, to go over that to understand how truthful, how miraculous uh, the book of Genesis is. It's a miracle in our hand. It's a Bible, it's a, it's a divine divine revelation. I, I cannot explain it. Who told it to Moses? Such, such a story. So let's see, day one. At the beginning, uh, came here and created them on earth, and it's, there was <coughs> Tov Abo, which means chaos, and darkness, and in water, and God said, war, and they let it be light, and then it was a judgment at the end of the day. There was darkness and abyss. What, that's what Moses said on day one. Could, could last a billion of years. What, what, is, what is History Channel saying? History Channel says, in short, that, uh, uh, yeah, the uh, uh, five, the earth was created, there was a beginning, Big Bang, and about 4.5 billion years ago, earth looked like a round ball, red, hot, burning ball, full of streaming lava, temperature of 8,000 Fahrenheit. No life, nothing. There was only darkness around it. There was water in space. And there was energy. Everything that Moses says here, all light is energy, matter, chaos. So whatever Moses says here on day one, that, that's how finally, that, that covered the period from the Big Bang until Earth is now formed as a globe, but a red planet. It doesn't look like today if you look from a satellite. Earth look red, planet is hot, streaming lava. It cooled down. We said that history channel. So the face phase is red planet, which start to cool down because radioactivity start to, to go down, he said. And crust, Earth, Earth became, developed a crust. At the end of this day, Moses says at the end of day one, Elohim said it was good. He, he judged the day and he decided it was good. It could, good means it could move on to the next day, which can fit there. Now, Earth came to the, to the according to Moses, Earth came to a phase where it could move on to the next phase. It formed, if, it can be explained. By, by what, what the, what, uh, by the crust, crust if it was cooling down, form a crust that accumulate water on it. What does Moses say on the day two? So Lokim says, go, it's good. Let's move on to the next day. I'm ready, what is the next day? 
uh, Elohim said, let the water gather from below the, from below the, the sky and, and uh, some water come from, from below, some water come from above. And the, the, that's it. Day two was over. Water. No life mentioned, no fish, nothing. Moses says simply day two, water. What the sign says, after right after the earth was thrown crossed on it, they passed, they say, not me, they an earth passed through a segment in space full of full of water. It can identify today, they know where it is. And for 300 billion, million years, 300 million years, Earth was bombarded by endless comet of full of water, giant comet. Some of that still fall on Earth here and there. Like in Siberia a few years ago. Full of water, tons of water. After 300 million years, Earth, the narrator says, Earth will never see such rain again. When you see the rain dropping there on the animated, animation there. After 300 million years, Earth was covered now by ocean. It's ocean, gray ocean, there's no atmosphere. And the sky is not blue, <coughs> only water, gushing water. Earth, the water came from above, from, from a comet, and from below, from the, from the solid rock that started cooling. Now, who said that? They, they said it. So can, can you find a better match for Moses to, to the science? How could Moses say that day two, only water, nothing else? They call it, they, they call it the next phase. Now they call it the water world. Earth is now get, uh, get a new name, water wall. <clears throat> so from the red planet that cooled down, became water wall. Why did the Earth pass right there at the right time in, in this segment of to accumulate water? Science cannot say. Mother said, Elohim made it. So he wanted, Elohim wanted to accumulate water on Earth. What, 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 what Moses says is makes sense more than the science because science can explain it. So that's the second flaw. Let's move on to day three. What, remember, Earth is covered by water. And Elohim said, now day three, according to Moses, day three down. There's no judgment here. <coughs> day three down. And Elohim said, let the, let the dry land separate from the water. Boom. That's it. The day three continue. But the, the first phase, first phase of day three, the third day, let the dry land appear. No life mentioned Moses, no fish in the water, temperature is still high. The atmosphere is, is raw, not even atmosphere, just water. But dry land appeared. What, the, what does this say? What does this guy say? What do they say? They say that somehow, we cannot explain why, but after 300 million of years that water came down the cumulative on Earth, suddenly there was a volcanic reaction in, in, the, in, in, the, pl in the plates on the, of the archaeological plates, there was a volcanic eruption, and a new rock was formed like granite, they call it. The granite is, can float in the water, accumulate in the water, and it's strong, you can stand the gush of water. And the first time, a continent, first an island, Granite Island, then a continent, Rodinia, is formed. Rodinia is bereft of any life. We know the outline of it because you can see a rock from Rodinia, they look black. We say, they say, 
The scientists go there on South Africa, I pick up the stone and say, you see, those stones, they say, the black stone, they don't have any life in it. They are, they are from Rodinia, from that primordial dry land that appeared after, on, on, on what, what, we, what Moses called Hell Day. How did Moses know that before there was any fish, there was any, any, anything, the first thing out of the water, suddenly came dry land, continent. So the matching what, what Moses is saying and what these people say are perfect. And, and, and uh, then Moses go on to the second part of the, what he called day three. What science simply says, uh, well, let's continue the phase. They call it a phase, uh, they call it a thing, uh, they call it blue, la blue, la blue planet, why? Because, let's see what Moses said, what came next. What, after, after the separation, dry, after the appearance of, of dry land that we understand now as, as, as a, a, the granite, Moses says, God, God said, let it be grass and trees and shrubs, vegetation. No moving animal. There are no fish and no bird. Nothing. Only, only, only vegetation. And for billions of years, Earth was covered this vegetation. No moving animal. That's what Moses saying. God, God seeded, <coughs> seeded life on Earth in the form of vegetation. So the first life on earth was vegetation, for seeds, tiny. What do they say? They say that the granite, granite island, okay, that the granite island uh, were perfect because the slope is the slopery border, and and creature called. Po for a stromatolite, it's one, one cell, like, a, like, a, like algae, settled there. Nobody can tell where it came from, but it was equipped with DNA. It was equipped with, with, the, with the DNA, RNA. It has all the information, how to form protein. Where it came from, nobody knows. Wisdom, we know God, Wisdom of Elohim did it, but the scientists, but scientists say yes. At that point, monocellular cells settle on the border, and those, after a million of years, they develop into shrub, trees. Earth was covered by, by vegetation, and the monozoa, had this, this monocellular creature had one talent, photosynthesis. They took the CO2 from Earth, from the, from the sky, from the air. They, they split the CO2 to oxygen and carbon. The carbon they took for their own shell, and the oxygen they released. So after a million of years, oxygen starts popping up first in the water, and then bubbles, and, and the history channels show you, bubbles in the water, and the bubbles flow up and accumulate in the air. Suddenly, after a million of years, we have atmosphere. Earth turned blue, dubbed as the blue Earth. So we have the red planet at the beginning, day one, day two, the water plant, the water, which fits what was said. Day three, blue, they call it day three, the, the whole phase. First to island, then vegetation. And it's named now blue, blue because it's, uh, it's a it atmosphere. No, no mobile life. Who told Moses that the vegetation was for so long in the, on the earth without any mobile life? Did Pharaoh tell him that? Did the Greek tell him that? Did the uh, Aristotle know, know that? Did Newton know that? No. But he, he wrote it 3,000, 3, 3,500 years ago. Who told him that? Did the Japanese tell him that? The Indians? The Babylonians? 
They have ugly story of our creation, full of sexual perversion. Father, father God killing son God. Resurrection of God, resurrection of the, of the embryo, the son. And, and full of um, sec- ugly sexual cutting, the sexual organ of, of the father. And I, I cannot, if I tell you the story, I will blush. I cannot tell you, so ugly they are. This is what they told about creation in Moses' time. And here Moses telling us things that this guys confirm. The first time in history, we know it's true. We know what the, what means would mean. Let's move on. In detail, in detail, I, wrote, I put it in the book in more detail, but let's move on just the idea. So we come at the end, how interesting. Moses said, how did the day three end? Here is a point. Day, Moses said it didn't happen, it didn't stop just by that. Day three says, Elohim judge the day, and it was good. It means, good means, remember, that some were, good was some creature were good to follow, <clears throat> and some, and, but those who were not good anymore were eliminated. Anytime Elohim make a judgment like that, he said it's good. But what is good, move on to the next thing. But what is not good is eliminated. What the science says, how the era t- t- was ended, ended, the scientists say that uh, the ice age descended on Earth. So it's lasted 60 million, 50 to 60 million years. 60 million years. It killed all the vegetation on Earth, leaving it in the water. So what was on the water, Elohim said, it's good, it can survive. But it was on Earth, it was eliminated. And it, it said, it, was, it looked like the, uh, the vegetation, life would, would be gone. It almost eliminated it. From, yet, it, it was kept, life was kept miraculously in the water, under the cover of ice. Let's see the importance of that. Elohim said, it's good. It means whatever was left, is good for the next phase. So now day four, well, let's move on to day four. What happened, Moses said day four. Moses said that the, day four, the, the earth saw the first time, not that the sun and moon, people make mistake. The thing that sun and moon were created on day four. He says, day four, Moses says, let, let them be seen on earth. So the first time that earth the sun and moon were seen on earth in a regular fashion, he said. So, so regularly the seasons are established because its axis of, the, of earth is now established. And, and, um, and day and night, and calendar, so, so precise they are. So from now on, calendar can be set up. That's what Moses said. What does this guy say? That the ice actually was caused by the earth tilt earth axis tilting and the axis established itself so much that the day of night became established uh, and, uh, uh, and, and it supported life in the water in a certain way. I don't know if there is any better uh, match uh, between uh, Moses and, 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 and the science, so much. Moses tell you here is a phase, which we call day four, that uh, no creature are, 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 are born, but the, air, but the day or night, it took, the, took Earth millions of years under the ice, ice ball, they call it, they call it the ice ball age. Earth, there is a picture of Earth in, in space looking like tennis ball ice ball for 60 million years and it took earth under the ice to, to establish, not to wobble anymore. So that season was established, tide, uh, tide could settle in and day of night. Uh, and that's important for mobile life. The science says, the science says, scientists say now 
that the, the, the day and night being equal, being fixed, uh, help the nervous system to develop. Nervous system need uh, to switch from night to day to sleep, to take, to revive itself. So the circadian, I make it short, the circadian cycle established for any creature. So that, uh, Moses says now, day after, after day four is over, what come next? Moses says, fish. And God says, let the fish abundant. Bless them, be fruitful, abundant fish. It doesn't say to any other creature beside mankind. Fish, abundant fish in the water. Who told Moses that the first mobile life was formed in the water? Why not uh, on, on the way, on the head of the tree? No, in the water. And science said exactly those, those living under the ice, protected in, deep in the water, being the, the season, the stabilization, day and night help helps the, to develop worms, tiny worms, the mobile life, which need nervous system, and life exploded, I'm quoting them, life exploded in the water. Cir they call it circadian or circadian, Cambodian, uh, Cambodian air it lasted hundred, I mean, million of years in the water. The life, life kingdom, animal kingdom came on earth in the water. The first eye, the first new, the first nose, the first ears, the fish, the, the, the predator, uh, the, the, the talent to disguise himself. The, from the, from the, your predator, from the, People from, from kitchen want to pray on you and to fool your 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 prey. All that moral or moral issue of eating and being eaten, uh, all that develop in the water. So many weird creatures that earth quoting them. So many weird creatures, they show you. They show you the weird skeleton of those creatures that are gone now, exploding in the water. And all in the water because nothing was on earth, nothing could move on to, to on the land because of UV bombardment. We said that they say only one. But uh, Moses says after day five, after fish came out, came, came bird. Some of the fish on the water, on the tide, they, they uh, the, the tide threw some fish on the, on the shore, and, and after a million of years, those fish on the shore wanted to go, wanted to go back to the water they developed, so to speak, the wing. So they saw on the water to catch other fish. So elf was covered by huge birds and also by insect. And, and in time, uh, the ozone layer allowed the vegetation to move on, on the dry land, Swamps, crocodile, giant uh, lizard. Some of the lizards could fly 15,000 miles nonstop. Uh, some of the US Air, Air Force um, uh, jet, uh, 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 military jet are uh, uh, made along, along those design of, the, of those lizards. They want to copy the they are the, the, the most fascinating flying feature ever 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 lived on Earth, and and U.S. Uh, Air, uh, Air Force tried to emulate those creatures in one in those jets. That's what I read. So swamps, the swamp United States. Some of them can remind you the life our Earth look like this. Those, those days, crocodile. Who said that? Moses said. It. Moses said. Bird and fish, bird and crocodile. All the all the coal that we have today come from that area. Huge vegetation, swamps, and 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 this kind of life full of uh, flying insect to the to their kind. What is it? Confirmed by 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 these guys, and and it ended up 
but again, it was a judgment that make it short. Moses said the, the area was ended with, with, with a judgment. And the king passed judgment, you know, you know, you know, if he passed judgment, some were eliminated, some were allowed to move on. They say that the era is gone because it was explosion. I tell you when, when, it, when it happened so many millions of years ago, explosion of gas that exploded, killed mo most of the animal on earth and in the water. But whoever left, whatever left was good for the next year, more sophisticated animal. They six came, 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 came on, and Moses says now, uh, uh, God, Elohim made cattle, then beasts that feed on the cattle, and then, and then snake, I'll tell you about the snake, and then man, okay? They said the same thing. That's Pangea, the animal of, uh, of the Zoriatic Park. It's six day. Uh, the, the, the huge cattle that's in the swamp, and then came the hunter of the dinosaurs that fed on them, the beast. And what about the snakes? Yes, they found the snakes after 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 the demise of the dinosaurs. Uh, came earth was ruled by so giant snakes that they they, they showed on, on, on Time magazine one of them skeleton that you can you can accommodate two greyhound bus in a skeleton. And this is a junior, uh, this was a junior snake. Imagine those creatures moving around after the, after the dinosaur were gone uh, uh, 60, 60 million years ago. And then God said, let it make Adam. Okay, now we move to, to making Adam. So far, I don't know. I don't know how can anyone in his mind uh, to read it and see how, how Moses miraculously match, how, how can match what we know from science. I mean, you need to know what, who the king was dated. A day is not our day. And uh, we, a day is an area and it's a building and God made it, and he made it to a goal to bring Adam on earth. It took him so many billion years to make us. How precious we are in his eyes. He did all his work, all his work to bring us. Of course, a force of evolution. Uh, I didn't speak about it, but all, all these forces of evolution and genetic and DNA, all it is wisdom. Call it DNA, call it whatever. DNA is a computer. Who put it there? Cool. So, there is a perfect match of, of the story of Genesis to, to science. And instead of being shy away from it, they say, oh no, it's allegorically, it's allegorical story, it's a holy beast, it's some other word. Uh, the Bible is only to meant to tell us, uh, don't tell us history, all, all these things that are my, my, my rabbis used to tell me, because they didn't know science. And for years I thought, I thought also that allegorically, don't take it literally. Who, who, who pay attention to the story of Genesis? Oh, nobody. Ah, oh, it's just a myth. Oh, it's not a myth. It's a, it's a truthful story that Elohim will seek to put a stamp on it. It's truthful 32 times. It's a truthful So why did Moses write it? For us. I believe he knew that the generation will come and doubt his, his message, but say the Torah is not, the Bible is not true. And he put out a story. Nobody could understand the story as we need, as we do it now, the first time ever. He probably knew it. I mean, people who didn't, didn't know science, people who lived in the 16th century, 15th century or 10th century, or whatever, even, even the Rambam, even, even, even the great rabbi, they did no science, they couldn't understand it. So they say it's allegorical. But he knew, he, he wrote it for us, he's a prophet. He knew that a generation will come, and we need support, he need to prove, they will seek a proof. 
to, to the, if, and, and, and you know, if, if this story is true, it's so truthful, then wow, it's a miracle. Think about it. The Torah is, the Bible is really a miracle. I, don't, I don't, cannot really explain it otherwise. So it's the only miracle that I have in my mind, in my hand, that I cannot doubt. I can doubt the Exodus. I can doubt the, uh, somebody walking on the, on the water. I don't make a miracle. I don't know. I, can, I have the story, but I have no proof for it. Then I don't need the proof. I just open the book. And I read it. And I open, I open the, uh, this video, and I see it. And I compare the two. I have the, I have the proof in my hand. It's a real thing. I don't need Kabbalah, and I don't need the giant rabbis to tell me all kind of things, and I don't need to seek the afterlife. I, this is a true story for us, and, and this is actually the message of Noahide, that we are, the Noahide should focus on real life on earth, on truth, and not talking about, uh, Kabbalah is nice, all kind of stories about the Shab and the Shama, but this basic, first of all, the Torah is a real life on earth of so society. Now, of course, Moses is not finishing here. He, he only come now to, to, the, to the real message about man. He wants to tell us how man is being made for, and for what purpose. And I can say, I can tell, if the, if the beginning of the story is so wide, if it's truthful for the sixth day, for nature, and it explains nature to me, and he knows nature more than anybody else, what he's saying about man is also true, must be true. So this truthful story he placed there to tell us, listen boys, listen girls, I'm going to tell you, tell you, to, you in your science you will find it's true. Now I'm going to tell you about mankind and listen to what I'm saying, because it's the same truth in mankind. All right. 